I was with my niece, who's on her high school soccer team and is taking it pretty serious and attempting to get some kind of scholarship out of it. I'm pretty healthy, but don't really work out too much. Something I often do is run and hike. I live in Kentucky, not in a rural part, but there is a state park near my house that's about 6,500 acres, so it's pretty secluded and densely forested. There are some really nice trails that allow you to run for a good chunk and then hike for a bit to split up the long bits of the trail that are flat. She decided to tag along with me today for a quick three or four mile run. It was raining, but nothing too heavy, kind of a spitting rain. Nothing we couldn't handle. We got up to the peak of this one hill, and it had been about two miles or so according to our phones, so we decided to turn back and head back to the car. As we were headed down the steep side of the climb, we were walking pretty slow, making sure that we didn't lose our footing, when out of nowhere there was the coldest chill that came up from behind us once we made it about halfway down. At the time it happened, we both commented on how cold it was on our backs, but didn't make too much out of it and went on with our conversation. In these woods, there's some wildlife like small deer and I believe maybe some coyotes, but they tend to stay away from the paths. At least I've only ever heard them in my many years of coming here, never once seen any more than a few footprints. Once we got off of the hillside and hit a stretch of trail that was flatter ground, we began to pick up the pace when a deer darted across the path maybe 10 yards max in front of us, causing us to stop in our tracks. The first deer was then followed by three more, and not one of them even so much as looked our way. My niece looked at me puzzled because of the oddity of it, and to me they were acting as if they were running from something, a predator of some sort. Once they had gone, we started back with our run and we heard a noise behind us, a loud booming sound of something of substance falling to the ground from some height. When we stopped and turned, we saw nothing. No animals scurrying away like one would expect after a substantial noise in the wilderness. In fact, everything was calm, eerily calm. Just as we looked at each other to ask what the hell that that had been, there was yet another cold wind gush through the valley, pushing all the rain off the leaves surrounding us and soaking our sweatshirts. I was starting to freak out inside, but was doing my best to stay calm for my 17-year-old niece. I'm pretty sure she could tell, though, that I was freaked out. I tell her, come on, let's get to the car, and we take off again, and there was a man leaned up against a tree on the side of the trail, dressed in a black suit with a white button-up shirt on. His collar was opened, but he had a tie on, sagging like a tired businessman on the way home from a long day. It startled me at first. I was not expecting to see anyone for a few reasons, one being that we were at least a mile away from any parking lot or street, another being that we had never heard or seen him coming, and the stretch of trail that we were on was flat and open for a good half mile. I got over to put myself between the man and my niece as we jogged past him. When we did, I looked him in the eye and gave him a how you doing nod as we went along. He was sort of pale. His eyes were very white, but his irises were ice blue. Everything I saw from the quick look that I got close up looked to be clean cut and proper. I did not notice a speck of mud on him anywhere, and the two of us had it caked on the bottom of our shoes and even on the back of our pants and shirts from kicking it up on us as we ran. We had to get to the top of another hill, smaller than the last, but still quite the hike. Once at the top, I took a quick look behind us, and he had seemed to vanish without a trace. Now, with having the vantage point of the hill, I could see out past the trail and see most of the trail that she and I had just come from, yet he was nowhere in sight. I scanned the sides of the trail, and still nothing. My niece asked me who that guy was and why he was out so deep in the woods wearing a suit. Questions I simply did not have the answers to. We made it back to the car with nothing else out of the ordinary happening to us on the trail. As we got to my car, I pulled the keys from my pocket and unlocked the doors for maybe about ten feet out. Walking up to the only car in the entire lot, I noticed muddy footprints coming away from my car from the driver's side. 
Weird, considering I had no mud on my shoes when we got there. But there are trails leading up to the lot, so I figured maybe someone had came through before we got there and I just didn't notice. However, when I pulled the handle to open the door, it was also caked with mud underneath, as if someone had been attempting to open my door with a muddy hand. Nothing more occurred, but the whole encounter leaves chills covering my body the more I think about it. I am a 26-year-old female who has been having constant dreams where someone grabs me by my ribs and their fingers sink into my body. They're pushing and pushing their hands into my ribs and I'm crying out for it to stop and it hurts for real. A crushing pain makes me want to curl up and beg for it to stop. It's the real deal. In one specific scenario, in a dream, I gasp and sit up in my bed. This is the dream, remember, so a lucid dream, if you will. I sit up in my bed, and I am scared of my room. I grab the blanket closest to me and realize that it's at that stage of early morning where the sun will be coming up soon, but hasn't quite just yet. I feel this terror for some reason, and then a man suddenly comes into my room. He's in a long, blank t-shirt. He's bald and scary with bloodshot eyes, and he's pale and just... He looks at me instantly and rasps, Don't think I haven't forgotten what you owe me. I swear, I can never unhear this. And then he jumps on me and instantly starts to dig his fingers into my ribs. I can't even explain how bad it hurts and how it can feel so real. I'm wincing, I'm trying to shrink into myself, make the pain stop. It's so bad I can barely even beg to stop it, but nothing stops it. Until I finally wake up. I sat up in bed and prayed that it wasn't going to happen again and just turned on the light. The sun was coming up anyhow, and I didn't want to be in bed anymore. Of course, I was slightly anxious about turning the bedroom door corner in case that thing was real. Anyway, I have a lot of sleep paralysis issues, but this was the first of these pain in the ribs dreams. Now I have a few from time to time. Just the other night, I was in a prison and someone attacked me and jabbed my ribs, holding on to me tight and just repeatedly jabbing and holding my ribs hard as I was praying for it to stop and begging for them to stop and crying. I don't know what it means. Also, I'm totally healthy with no pain in my ribs or anything like that in daily life. Am I being attacked by a spirit? Is this really something? Earlier today, I think I might have seen something, but I don't know. This happened a few hours ago while I was outside mowing my lawn. Quickly out of my yard. When you walk down my driveway toward the street, if you look to the left, you'll see a dead end. And if you look to the right, you'll see a big tree that you couldn't see through. This is relevant. Now, on to what happened. I was mowing the lawn inside my fence, and when I finished that, I went over to the part of my yard that was outside of my fence. After I finished mowing, I looked to the right and saw a pair of legs on the other side of the tree. All I saw was legs, because I couldn't see the person through the trees. But their legs were all black. Like I couldn't make out any features. I couldn't see any pants or shoes. It was just all pitch black. I'm confused, and so I try walking around the tree to see who it was. But whatever it was, ran away. 
It only took me two seconds to get to the other side. But as I said, whatever it was, was gone. I live on the corner of my block, so there's nowhere that a person could have hidden that fast. I've never believed in the paranormal or had any sort of experience, but I really can't explain what happened. Anyone who's had a similar experience and could possibly give me an explanation, I would appreciate it because I'm still confused. I was 13 years old, 2003. My friend and I were bored and decided to have some weird fun. Now, I've always had interest in supernatural and occult-like things. I've always been very empathic and in tune to things in a way that's hard to explain. Anyways, I didn't have a real Ouija, so we used paper and drew one and then used a corridor for the planchette. We asked if anyone was there and if they wanted to talk. Of course, there was nothing for a few minutes. Suddenly, the feathers of my dream catcher in my room started to sway. No open window or AC on. We asked again if anyone was there, and then it felt like there was a pull. We allowed ourselves to let go and just see what happened. It went to the yes. We asked what its name was, and we felt pulled towards D and C. Just those letters, D, C. Odd. A minute or so later, my grandma called for us that she was ready to go, as we were about to go to the mall. We stood up and walked out of my room. My friend looked at my face and gasped and told me to look in the mirror. I had about a two-inch scratch on my face that was not there before. We were a little freaked out, but mostly confused. We went shopping and my grandma asked what had happened, and I told her I really didn't know. The next morning, the scratch was gone. After that night, however, things got pretty bad. My room for some reason started to feel colder than the rest of the house. Even my grandma commented a few weeks later that my room was, quote unquote, cold as death. My dog stopped coming into my room as well. He would stand at the doorway and I would call for him and he would just look at me and leave. He might come in rarely for a minute or so, but he would never stay. I started to get feelings like I wasn't alone. The air felt thicker, the dark seemed darker. When I was home alone, I would hear things. Footsteps and creaking. One night, it all came to a head. My grandparents went out to dinner and I stayed home. I was downstairs playing on the desktop and instant messaging my friend. The bathroom door next to me had been shut tight, but made a clicking sound. The knob had turned and the door had opened slowly. I got up and slammed it shut. I went back to playing my game and instant messaging when I heard a loud crash. I got up and saw my grandparents' crucifix that had been hanging on the wall, on the floor. I put it back and turned on as many lights as I could, and the TV, and just took my mind off it all. Around this time, my grandma, who is very Catholic, started getting into more New Age things like crystals and psychics. She went to one and the psychic told my grandma that she had a granddaughter who saw orbs but that these orbs I had been seeing were angels protecting me. It is true that I had been seeing a lot of flashing lights that I called orbs in those months. Fast forward a year or so, and some things happened to me that I won't go into here. Depression and hospitalizations and boarding schools. When I got home from boarding school, my grandma told me that she had spent a night in my room. She had laid down to go to sleep, and suddenly heard a cranking noise. She said she remembers thinking to herself, please don't start playing music, and then my music box started playing. She said she bought a lot of different incense and played a special prayer on repeat for days and basically prayer bombed the whole house. 
When I returned home, my room felt clean, like whatever had been there was gone. Safe. I stopped seeing the orbs as much. I never played with a Ouija board again, but I do love the designs. I have a Ouija board mug and a Ouija board mat on my dresser. I like the symbol and I'm not afraid of them, but I will never use one again. I have been tempted through the years to try again, hoping that maybe being better prepared I can have a safer outcome, but I just don't know if I want to take that chance of opening a door to any stranger knocking. So my brother had an apartment right next to my mom's. I was staying the night at my mom's, but me and my brother decided to watch a movie at his apartment because he has a bigger TV and my mom had already fallen asleep. Anyways, we watch a movie or two and eventually he went to sleep and I did too not long after. So the dream, or nightmare, started with me laying down in my brother's spare room on a mattress on the floor. And someone had just walked out of the room, so I was alone, and I started looking around. I looked at the closet door, which was right in front of my mattress, and I started staring at the open closet door, when out of nowhere, an all-black face peered around the corner and was staring at me. I had three brothers that would all mess with me, so in my dream I started mocking the thing in the closet, and I was saying stuff like, oh ha ha, so scary, nice demon impression, and stuff like that. I kept mocking it because I thought it was one of my brothers trying to scare me, and out of nowhere it got super cold, and my chest got super heavy, and the thing in the closet jumped out on all fours and started hissing. I can't really describe the noise it was making, but it sounded something like a cougar screeching and a snake hissing at the same time, and it was very blood-curdling, and it makes me shiver to talk about it. Anyways, when this started to happen, I began to lose my breath as if it were sucking my soul out of my body, and then it just stopped and crawled back into the closet very contortedly, and I woke up. I was very calm when I woke up, but I had cold sweats, and I was very confused. I sat up on the couch and looked at my brother, who was sitting right next to me, and I told him the whole story, and he was silent for a good minute. My brother told me that he's had multiple dreams like that, and that my mom has too, and he said that he has always had a bad feeling when close to that room, and that he always woke up in the middle of the night thinking that he was being watched. Fast forward to a few months back, and my brother was moving out, and me and my other brother got stuck cleaning that room. I always got a bad feeling when my brother would leave me in there alone, and the room was colder than the rest of the house. I haven't had a dream like this since, but then my other brother, whom I haven't spoken of yet, just had a dream similar to mine, and it made me think about it all over again. I have had dreams about ghosts before, and they're all very vivid, and I get the same feeling in all of them. I suspect that I have a demon following me, but I have no clue where it is from. I started to think I had the same demon as my brother and mom, but they have way worse nightmares, and theirs are way more vivid, and they see an actual demon, and not just a figure. The next day, after I had that nightmare, my brother bought sage and salt and started to spread it around his apartment. He also got holy water and put that out too, and drank some of it with me and my other brother. Ever since then, I haven't had a nightmare, but I have had some where I get the feeling that I felt when I had the first nightmare, but they usually go by really fast, and I typically just pray in my sleep, and it goes away. If anyone else has a story about their first experience with sleep paralysis, or simply just a vivid nightmare, feel free to share it. There's always going to be people that will have experienced what you have experienced.
I'd like to start this off by saying that I'm an absolute skeptic, to the point where I've always secretly scoffed about paranormal activities. But I can't explain this. I met my husband in a little dive bar that he was managing. We clicked instantly, and he's a very outdoorsy guy. We got together a couple times, and he officially asked me out on an overnight hike. I had a ten-month-old St. Bernard pup, who of course came with. We drove up way past Cougar towards Mount St. Helens and parked on the trailhead leading to Bolt Camp. It's just a little shelter along the Lewis River about five to six miles in. We packed all our gear, and even a backpack for my dog and headed out. I can't stress how beautiful that hike is. Massive Douglas firs covered with moss. Sometimes there were little wooden bridges crossing streams along the trail. My husband would always yell, watch out for trolls, when we crossed them. We got kind of a late start, so the sun went down and it was almost completely dark by the time that we arrived. There were so many hollow stumps, the setting sun would shine through them, and they lit up inside. They looked like little hobbit houses with fires burning in their hearths. And the mushrooms, my god, there were bioluminescent ones that glowed green in the dark. It took forever, he kept saying that it was around the next bend, but it never was. We finally arrived and unpacked, and it was awesome. You can look up Bolt Camp online. It's a wooden three-sided shelter. You'll even see my saint in one of those pics. A tree had come down on it at some point, and the pics you see of it partially smashed are how it was for us. It was still more than intact enough to sleep in, though. People leave stuff at Bolt Camp for the next folks. Someone had left half a bottle of scotch. We partook in that, and when we left, we hung a little baggie of weed from the rafters and some beer and water. Anyway, we made a fire and cooked steaks on rocks, got drunk, and fell in love. I fell asleep first. I slept towards the inside of the shelter, my now husband and dog toward the outside. It was late October, and while it was dry, it was very, very cold, and the fire refused to stay lit. Eventually, he fell asleep, too. My Saint Leo kept growling into the dark, and they bonded over that. What do you see, buddy? What's out there? They were both asleep when I woke up. Thinking it was around 2.30 to 3 a.m., I was facing the back wall of the shelter. Then I saw it. A wispy, gossamer, cobweb-looking thing floating to and fro in the back of the shelter. It would flip and spin and turn over itself. It was so beautiful and fascinating. I wasn't scared. I really, really wanted to wake him up, but I barely knew the dude and was afraid he would think I was nuts. So I watched it until I fell asleep. Morning came. I never mentioned it. We fed the dog, ate a bunch of trail mix and cheese and sausage, and hiked back. I dropped him off at his place. Like I said, we fell in love that night, and moved in together a couple months later. We were reminiscing about our awesome hike when he decided to share something with me. I dropped him off that day at his house. That same evening, he was out on his porch having a smoke when he saw something. A cobwebby thing, turning over and over on itself, floating back and forth in the street lamps. He found this interesting. He watched it, and finally it settled into a clump of bushes. He went to take a closer look, and a pair of glowing red eyes materialized, and he decided that he wanted no part, and ran back indoors. This is a man afraid of nothing. Anyway, I obviously immediately told him about what I had seen, and how I was too embarrassed to share before. The similarities are just too great. It had to have been the same thing. Everyone seems to start these stories with, I'm skeptical, but... And this time won't be an exception. I'm not an atheist, though. 
So, my friends and I had a bottle of gasoline. Trust me, this isn't supposed to be a funny story. We're all car guys, so we sometimes have some contaminated gas left over. Anyways, we wanted to get rid of it the only way possible for teenagers to think of. Burn it in a field to see fire go woof and the empty bottle go boom or whatever. The three of us, giggling, made our way to the nearest cornfield that had an opening apparently from a truck making a U-turn or something as the farmers had been planting the corn. We decided to get as much stuff to burn as we could dry leaves, bunches, etc., to make a huge campfire and help warm it up with half a gallon of 92-octane gasoline. It burns really well. Both of my friends were filming the whole process as I poured gasoline all over the place and made a line of gas going from the pile of the dry stuff. One of them said, we're summoning Satan, and all of us kind of laughed it off and didn't pay much attention to it. The whole thing went pretty well. No one got hurt. We didn't set the jungle on fire or anything. Just fooled around quite a bit. My buddy's phone started breaking down while filming, though, and in a weird manner. The recording continued, but the picture turned black and white, and what seemed like it copied itself and pasted eight red-tinted, semi-transparent, smaller versions of itself on the screen in a grid-like pattern, and then it stayed like that for a few seconds before the phone turned off. We just laughed at our friend's now broken Galaxy S3, yeah, it happened a while ago, and went home as it was really dark by that time. The next morning, my other friend, who had filmed it all with my Galaxy Note 2, and I waited to meet the S3 guy to complete the trio and discuss the way that we gained world dominance by the evening and such. When we saw him come up to us, he was pale as hell and his eyes were screaming terrified. Turned out his phone was alright, and even saved the video with the glitch, as it was. And he watched the video right before coming to us. You guessed it. He saw what he thinks was either a demon or a ghost. As the image on his screen collapsed into the same red-tinted shatter, he turned away from the fire to see better and get a grasp of what had happened to his phone. The camera pointed away from the fire into the corn, where there was quite a distinct black and white silhouette of a ghost-like creature looking at the flames. Well, yeah. You could take it for a glitch or a glare in the camera lens, so we didn't think too much about it. The creature, if it existed, which we doubted or sure as hell wanted to doubt, was standing right next to us as if it were a fourth friend just looking calmly at the fire with us. Then we decided to watch the video from my phone to make sure that it was just a glare. We wanted to be able to sleep tight with no worries but we wished that we hadn't by the end, as there was yet another, this time a more distinct figure to be found. Just as this other friend pointed the camera the same way that the first guy did, a face was staring at us with an evil smile. Just a face peeking out of the corn. No body, no nothing. With no glares that looked like that or were the same color or any other glare at all. Days and years passed. We're still kind of skeptical about it, or at least try to be, but with all the facts combined, we to this day still can't find a reasonable explanation for it. We even tried to repeat the thing with the fire and took a bunch of cameras with us, but we chickened out to do it at night, as we had done the first time, so no luck. So, years from now, being an adult car guy, I have about 20 gallons of bad gasoline I would never use for any car out there. If I make it out alive, get ready for chapter two. For context, I don't normally have a problem with sleep paralysis, and actually had to look it up to see if that's what I experienced. This past Saturday evening, my wife and son went to her mom's to use the pool and ended up staying late. I was home alone, 
I did some chores and ended up downstairs with the AC on and watching TV. I wasn't physically tired from chores, which was putting a load to wash, taking out trash, and cleaning up the kitchen counter. The next thing I know, I am deep asleep, although I'm mentally awake. I try to move my body and cannot. I can think like I'm awake and I can hear myself groaning. I can see my room and I'm lying on my sofa. It's dark outside and I have the overwhelming feeling that there is someone in the room with me. I'm struggling to wake myself and I can't. I know I'm laying on the sofa. I can hear the TV. I have consciousness of my surroundings yet can't shake myself awake or move my body. I have this terrible feeling that there is someone on the other side of the room. My den is very long with a family room attached to it, but I can't move my body to see who is there. I get the feeling like if I don't move, something bad is going to happen. I'm eventually able to shake myself awake and have movement of my body again, yet the room seemed brighter, like if it wasn't as dark as when I was trying to move myself awake. I don't see anyone there with me. The TV is still on, and I know that it was the same program that I heard in my paralysis state. The second episode happened last night. My son was in our bed, so I went to his room to lay down as I got tired of him taking over the bed. I was watching YouTube, the lights were off, the bedroom window was open. I somehow passed out without even realizing that I had fallen asleep, and had another episode of sleep paralysis. I'm lying there. I can hear the fan and the iPad playing a commercial between videos. Again, I get a sense of foreboding. Someone is at the window, then something moved in the room. I think the closet door creaked. I'm trying to shake my body to move and I can feel my heart pounding. I eventually make my leg move off the side of the bed and I must be making grunting noises and trying to move my foot to touch the floor. Then I'm able to turn over, and I sit up. I haven't had a lot of experiences with this before, and it almost felt like something else was controlling it. Not like drugs, as I don't do drugs, nor alcohol, as I haven't had a drink in weeks. It was almost like hypnotism or something controlling me to fall asleep so quickly, and so deeply. I woke up this morning to some disturbing news. My wife and I sleep in different rooms, mainly because I snore a lot and I also toss and turn due to spinal issues. It works out best for us. Lately, I've been going to bed around 4 a.m. since I'm out of a job and I prefer the quiet of the night. My wife usually gets up anywhere between 5 to 6 a.m. if the cats are bugging her to give them a little something until feed time. Don't ask me why, it's just what she does. Anyway, this morning after I woke up, she said as she walked past my room, she saw a shadow figure sitting on the corner of my bed, staring at me, and that my iPod was on. She also said she knew I was sleeping because I was snoring. Now, I usually watch something on my iPad before going to sleep, but I also keep my door mostly closed so that the light from the iPad doesn't disturb her. If she saw me, it means the door was open, as it would have been impossible otherwise. Now that part doesn't disturb me too much. We have four cats, and it's not out of the ordinary for them to push the door open. What I know 100% for a fact is that I had the door mostly closed, and the iPad was definitely in sleep mode. I always put my iPad in sleep mode, and then put my phone on the charger prior to going to sleep. My door creaks, so I would have heard it open if I were still up. This is disturbing to me because it isn't the first time a shadow man was spotted by my wife, and I spotted one before meeting her. Back in either 2008 or 2009, I was living in my first apartment. 
I had the scariest experience of my life. I woke up sleeping on my chest, which I never do, and I found my entire body was paralyzed. The only thing I could move was my eyes. Out of the corner of my left eye, I could see a shadow figure approaching me. I tried screaming, but nothing came out. I started to panic, and before I could do anything, everything went blank, and I woke up in the morning. I usually forget most of my dreams, but this event is scared into my brain. The last bit of information I want to share is something that seems odd to me, but I don't really know how to explain it. It's only happened twice in my room over the last three years. What I've seen is this strange, tan-colored dust that appears out of nowhere in a small area. The two times it happened, it wasn't in the same area, and oddly, the areas around the dust only have the typical normal dust buildup. I've checked the ceiling to see if anything came out from there, and found nothing. It's strange to me because, while I'm not a clean freak, the amount of dust makes it look like it's been building up over months, which, for that, wouldn't be the case. This may have had nothing to do with anything, but I thought it was worth mentioning. I've watched documentaries on sleep paralysis and read some medical reports. I don't know if it is or isn't a medical condition, but what gets me is that people from all over the world with various beliefs have experienced the exact same thing. Always the inability to move one's body, and always a single or multiple shadow figures. So the area is deep in the Monongala Forest in Virginia. I was doing some hiking there alone, trying to explore the new area, seeing what's out there. Everything was going pretty smooth in general, except for one occurrence that had gotten me blown away completely. By the way, I'm a 37-year-old male, been hiking in forests and mountains many times, never had an issue. Anyway, so I'm walking in the forest, it was around 4pm, I was alone, I had everything on me including a radio beacon, compass, GPS, on my phone, and smartwatch. So as you can see, taking my precautions in case I get lost, so that I can figure out my whereabouts and get back. I also even had printed maps on me. While walking, I all of a sudden felt some sort of weird, like, very weird quietness. As if you know it was the vacuum. No birds chirping, just quietness. And what's extra weird about it was that it was so quiet that I could hear, like, the humming in my ears that you sometimes get to hear in total silence. I'm thinking, okay, quite odd. First, though, is that there might have been a predator in the vicinity, so I was trying to keep an eye out for that. I did carry something to protect myself with just in case I got attacked. Anyway, I just keep walking. No predator, but the quietness was just there. It's strange. I did not even see any birds anymore, just trees. I also noticed that the weather started getting worse, like it became cloudy in an odd way. I don't know how to explain it. Long story short, the weather got bad pretty much out of nowhere. At this point, I kind of started feeling like, I don't know how to describe it, I guess uneasiness? I decided to go back, and here's this. All of a sudden, the GPS is out on both my phone and my smartwatch, and the compass is spinning as if there's like a magnet close by or something like that. That got me very concerned because it pretty much means that I can't find out where to go in case I get lost. I started walking back. None of my navigational tools are working. I'm kind of still going back, just kind of orienting myself by the way that I came in. All of a sudden, I see the clouds above are really bizarre. It's like most of the clouds are weird and grayish in color, but they're not like clouds, but more kind of like fog, which is really way up. Then there was another cloud kind of surrounded by gray clouds, which was black. I've never seen a cloud look like that before. It was almost like the night sky. Then the craziness happened. 
all of a sudden, I hear music. Like a town clock bell or something like that. Like, you know, doing it every 10 seconds or so. I don't know. At the time, I just got scared. Really freaked out. And I just started running very, very fast back where I had come from. I was sprinting, and then eventually I noticed that the weather got better. It was no longer cloudy. The clouds weren't, in fact, visible anywhere near. I looked at my compass and GPS, and it was back up. I was, in fact, headed in the correct direction. After that, I just went back to the place where I had parked and left. Later that day, I looked up the weather forecast for that area. There wasn't supposed to be any cloudiness anywhere. It was supposed to be a sunny day with only sporadic clouds. I told my story to my buddies, also hikers. They say it might have been that I could have maybe fallen and maybe had a dream of that, but I don't think so because I don't remember falling or having a dream. Anyways, it's kind of a weird story. Maybe there's a logical explanation, but I don't know. Before we begin, you must understand that everything you are about to read is absolutely true and the events continue to this day. It was last summer. My girlfriend, now wife, and I finally made the big decision to move in together. Cobblestone Square is a situation of apartment complexes surrounding a central park. After living in another apartment for two years, I learned that a bigger apartment was opening up on the other side of the complex. We needed more space because my wife had two children from a previous marriage. After a rushed inspection, we were happy to move in right at the start of June. The months passed by and the days grew shorter and colder. Autumn was drawing to a close and with it, that's when the trouble began. In all the stories and movies, it starts out small. Things moving from place to place, lights being left on, etc. All chalked up to forgetfulness. This was true in our case, and we didn't think much of it. It only started to escalate with the children. Our apartment is set up with two bedrooms and bathrooms on opposite ends from each other. In our bedroom, we have our own private bathroom, and next to the kids' room is a small hallway leading to their own bathroom. We would give them baths in there and potty train, and almost as if flicking a switch, when the autumn months came, our youngest, a two-year-old girl, would absolutely hate going in that bathroom. At the mere mention of bath time, she would go into hysterics or, on good days, she would sit in the tub, and in the process of bathing, she would look past myself or my wife and start screaming and crying. Oftentimes, something would catch her eye in the mirror, and she would also start crying like mad. The most unsettling part would be that as soon as we took her out of the bathroom, she would stop and act as if nothing had happened. Our son, who was four at the time, would also run up to us and say that he would hear a voice saying, Uppy, which was a common saying among the children when they wanted to be held. We asked if it was his sister, and he would profusely say that it wasn't but he said it sounded like a kid. This happened a few times. With my wife being separated from her first husband and splitting custody, we would have the children come live with us every other week. On the weeks that the kids would go stay with their dad, the activity would seem to die down, but that didn't mean that it wouldn't happen at all. I asked my wife what she remembered from last year, and she recounted a time when we didn't have the children and she was cleaning the house. She noticed the kid's door was open. We usually keep it closed, but she thought maybe I had went into their room for something. She checked to see if I was inside, and seeing that I wasn't, she closed the door and didn't really think anything of it. It wasn't until a while later that she went to use the kid's bathroom and saw that the door was open again. She found me in our room and asked if I had opened it, and I said that I hadn't. With more incidents of lights being found on and doors opening, it all came to a head near the end of October when I was washing dishes in the kitchen. 
Above the sink, facing the living room, is a small window that allows someone in the kitchen to look out into the dining room and the living room, and additionally the back door, which is a sliding glass door. Important detail. After the kids had been put to bed and were asleep, my wife and I went about our normal duties and chores, trying to finish up before the next day started. As I was washing dishes, I looked up from the sink and saw in the glass of the sliding glass door the reflection of a large shadow in the hallway to the kids' bedroom. It quickly entered the bathroom, and I immediately walked over, turning on the light and seeing nothing there. I went to my bedroom where my wife was vacuuming, and I asked her if she by chance went into the kids' bathroom for whatever reason. I wasn't surprised by her response when she said no, and I told her what I had seen. It was after this event, and subsequently Halloween, that all the activity seemed to stop. More months passed by again, and we jumped to 2020. August. As soon as the activity started again, I began to keep a journal of all the findings. That way, there was a record. On August 10th, I went to the bathroom, the kids' bathroom, before going to bed, and heard a small child giggle. Both children were fast asleep. On August 11th, my wife was bathing our daughter, and for the first time in a year, our little girl started to shriek in fear until she was out of the bathroom. On August 13th, while getting ready for bed, our son knocked on our door. I'm always the one to answer, and he told me that he was afraid. He wouldn't elaborate on why, but when I laid him down in his bed, he begged for the closet to be closed. The closet has never been a problem, and a few nights after this, we returned to it being opened and haven't experienced anything like it again. On August 15th, my wife and I had an argument, and I went out to the couch to sleep for the night. As I was tossing and turning, I heard a child's voice in the night say, Uh-huh, as if answering a question. I didn't react, and forced myself to go back to sleep. Both myself and my wife have caught our son speaking to himself as well. My wife told me that once she heard him saying, Ow, stop it, you're hurting me. And when she went to go check on him, he was in the hallway by the kid's bathroom, holding his arm. During the daytime, the kids were playing and both me and my wife were doing our own thing. As I was sitting on the couch, our son runs behind the couch and stops and then says, And how would you do that? Out of the blue. I turn to him and ask him who he's talking to, and after a moment's hesitation, he says, nobody. I told him I heard him say something, and he then insisted that he didn't say anything. On one occasion, my wife was sleeping on the couch, and in the middle of the night heard a man's whisper say, don't get up, to which she promptly obeyed. It was the night after that I woke up from my sleep in bed to see a shadow shape standing over me with piercing red eyes. I felt as if it was going to hurt me. My wife and I have naturally begun our interest in the spiritual world. We began researching and looking for ways to go about this. We've purchased a Ouija board with no results and from a medium a supposedly haunted ring. If our apartment was going to be haunted, we wanted to know by who and with what intention. It seems as if our mail-order ghost has already made their home as one morning our front door was unlocked and slightly ajar, with nothing stolen. Tonight, as I write this, my wife and I were watching TV on the couch and decided to call it an evening. But as we got to our bedroom, I noticed a low scratching sound coming from the record player. I opened it up and saw that the turntable was moving as the needle was off its holder, turning the record player on. I replaced the needle and tried knocking the player a few times to see if it could have been easily bumped or knocked off, but no. The only way to move that needle was to pick it up with your fingers and set it down. I was reminded of one other time that this happened, long before we bought any haunted items. I am thoroughly convinced that my apartment is haunted. 
People die on them way too often to think it's not a possibility. And if nobody died here, the cemetery across the road definitely doesn't bring me any comfort. I can say that two distinct entities can be somewhat accounted for. A small child ghost and something else. Or maybe something that wants to be viewed as a child. But let's think happy thoughts. We still live here to this day. Autumn is just beginning. And that's when things really seem to get interesting. When I was younger, my mama would leave me home alone with my older brothers. As soon as she would leave, they would pull out a hidden Ouija board and play around on it. Of course, I wasn't allowed to be part of the game. I was probably around six or seven, and they were in their late teens. I can remember so vividly these memories. Mama left, and the boys went into a bedroom off the kitchen where the board was hidden. They closed the door behind them, and I was left watching cartoons by myself in the living room. The bedroom door had a gap under it, about an inch and a half tall, and I would sometimes quietly go lay on the floor and watch them play with it through the gap. I can remember them making contact with a spirit one night, and they asked its name, to which it replied, Tobias. Each time they played after that, it always seemed to be Tobias reaching out. For about a week, they conversed with this spirit, and nothing out of the ordinary seemed to come from it. However, one night, as I was watching them, the board started talking about me. My brothers would always write down the things being communicated and read them aloud, which made it easy for me to eavesdrop on them. As I lay there on the kitchen floor looking under the door, the game became active and my brother started writing. I saw both of them make eye contact and look at each other, confused. My oldest brother said, It said we are being watched? As they looked around the room, I snuck back to my cartoons. They opened the door and checked on me, then went back into the room. I crept back over to watch some more. This time, the board used my name. I recall my brother saying, It says Bianca needs to go away. I could feel the blood leave my face. I knew my brothers hadn't seen me watching. I got up and pretended to be sleeping on the couch, and eventually just actually did fall asleep there. I was awoken in the middle of the night by a strange sound. Kind of like the sound a cat makes in its throat when it's mad. I sat up and cleaned the sleep from my eyes. After sitting there in the dark for a moment, it seemed to go quiet in the house. I was getting ready to get up and go to the bathroom, but I felt unable to stand almost like something was pushing down on my shoulders. Then suddenly, it was like I was in a wind tunnel. I remember Mama's sheer curtains were whirling around and it felt like they filled the room. I felt so dizzy, and then it just stopped. I don't remember going to sleep at all, but I woke up on the same couch and it was daylight outside. I have never spoken about this to anyone. But the story doesn't end there. My brothers continued to mess around with the board, which I was no longer wanting to be around. It got to the point that weird things were happening to them, too. They would talk about it amongst themselves, and I would play oblivious. One night, my brothers walked out of the bedroom with a rolled-up sheet and scissors. They told me that they would be right back and walked out the door. The next morning, I learned that the board had said some things that really frightened them. They took it down the road to the old iron bridge near our house to cut it up and throw it over into the water. We were all sitting in the kitchen eating breakfast when we heard a loud crash outside. We ran out to see a car had wrecked on the bridge. My brothers were sure it was because of the Ouija spirit that they thought they had disposed of the night before. The person who wrecked happened to be a person that my brother went to school with. He told my brother that he wrecked because as he was driving over the bridge, a demon-like figure appeared next to him in the car. 
He later found a piece of the board in his car, and nobody knows how it got there. This is from 2015, but I really remember it like it was yesterday. It happened in Yokosuka, Japan, while I was stationed there with the Navy. I was out during the day walking and exploring Tokyo, and when I finally went back to the base, I didn't want to return to the ship for the night, so I stayed at the Navy Lodge on base. It had an open floor plan, so the only doors were the front door and the door to the bathroom. I had just went to sleep when I woke up randomly and I had sleep paralysis and couldn't move. I could only move my eyes to look around the room. It was like something was holding my body to the bed. Then I saw and heard the front door open and the light from the hall start to creep into my room. Then I saw and heard the front door open and the light from the hall start to creep into my room. The door slowly closed and then I saw a big shadow figure with white glowing eyes move from the front door kitchen area on the right over to the living room on the left. Slowly moving and keeping its eyes locked on me at all times. As it got around the corner to the living room, it stayed there for a few seconds before peeking its head around the corner and staring at me again before hiding back around the wall. I woke up and was able to move again, so I jumped out of bed and ran around the room, turning all the lights on, trying to find whatever it was, but nothing was there. I laid back on the bed and tried to fall asleep again, and almost as soon as I closed my eyes... It happened again. I couldn't move and could only look around the room. The thing then moved from the left from the living room to the right again where the bathroom was and continued to stare at me with its white glowing eyes the whole way. It opened the door and triggered the motion light in the bathroom. The light had a creepy blue glow to it that I still remember vividly. As it disappeared behind the wall again, it once more peeked around the corner, staring at me with its white glowing eyes for another five to ten seconds before going back into the bathroom and closing the door behind itself. I woke up again and jumped out of bed and ran around the room looking for it, leaving the bathroom the last place that I would check. I could see the blue motion activated light on in the bathroom from under the door. I finally threw the door open and went inside, throwing the lights on, and nothing was there. I went back to my bed, laying down again and trying to sleep, just hoping that I was imagining all of it. Then it happens again, but this time it feels like something is covering my mouth too. I can hardly breathe as I see the bathroom door open, letting the blue light seep into the rest of the room as it moves around the corner staring at me with its white glowing eyes, as this time it moves to the foot of my bed, standing there for a few seconds and then, almost as if it's extending its body, stretches all the way to where it's only a few inches away from my face, staring directly into my eyes with its own white glowing ones. I'm trying to flail my arms and scream out at it to leave when I'm finally able to get out a fuck off before it disappears right in front of me. I was raised to understand and live in harmony with the paranormal. There were a lot of spirits and odd happenings surrounding me when I was younger. I've never really liked being alone in the dark, but I don't remember being afraid of anything supernatural until one night. I was about 13, and we had recently moved into my aunt's old house. I immediately disliked the house, and especially my room. They just felt wrong. 
Still, we set everything up. We put my four-poster bed against the wall in such a way that my headboard was in a corner, and my footboard sat right against the light switch. So, if I laid on my bed and looked down, I saw the light switch, doorway, and top of the footboard. I had a big window to my right, with a street light just outside it. My bedroom door wouldn't close, and the hallway light stayed on. Anyway, I started to see shadowy figures during the day and night, but that was pretty normal. I woke up a few nights to tiny footsteps and cackling. I assumed they were goblins being annoying. I always felt watched. The first night something seemed wrong, I woke up hanging halfway off of my bed. I couldn't see any light or figure out how I was even laying. Finally, I found my footboard. I reached out much further than the switch should have been and turned on the bedroom light. As soon as I touched the switch, I could see the street and hallway lights again. About two nights later, I woke up just in time to see a dark figure appear over my footboard. It looked like a man's head and shoulders with thick black material draped over it. There were no facial features, and the blackness continued like it had a body, but no arms or anything. When I think back, it reminds me of the Dementors from Harry Potter but it slithered up over my footboard. I could feel the weight, and I could move, but it seemed like a bad idea. So I closed my eyes. I felt the weight continue up to my chest, pause, and disappear. I opened my eyes, and it was gone. I felt strangely better in the house after that, and I haven't seen it since. It was still one of the most terrifying experiences I've ever had. I don't know what it was, or who it was looking for. This happened on a hike up to Half Dome. We had a campground about a 20-minute drive away from the trailhead, and the group was composed of me, an 18-year-old male, my uncle, a 32-year-old male, and my uncle's friend, I'll call him D. There were two girls with us, but they aren't relevant to the story. My uncle and his friend are both Christians, so there were no substances consumed that could induce the feelings I will be talking about. We get to our campsite, set up camp, and go to sleep after eating. We plan to wake up at 4 and start to hike by 4.30. I randomly wake up at 3.30 a.m., like completely wide awake, and look out of my hammock, and I remember this odd feeling as if I was woken up by something. I remember looking out at the moonlit scene, the moon was very bright for some reason, and thinking to myself that it looks like a dream. I lay back in the hammock, but can't go to sleep, and end up waking up my uncle and friend at 3.50. My uncle asks me, were you walking around at night? This is important. And I say no, and ask why. He says that he woke up for some reason and could hear someone walking around. Not like an animal, but a person. I say, huh, weird, and we brush it off. We get to the trailhead around 4.30, and as everyone is unloading from the car, Dee says that he's going to use the bathroom, which there are a couple of before the trailhead. I walk behind him for some time before falling behind and waiting for my uncle who forgot something in the car. The short, straight road from the parking lot runs directly into a T-intersection with the road to the trailhead, and the bathroom is directly across from the intersection through a field a little. Those who have been there know what I'm talking about. We get to the intersection and wait for Dee to come out of the bathroom. We wait about ten minutes before I go and check, and he isn't there. I get back to my uncle and tell him that. He says, weird, maybe he went back to the car or something, and we decide to wait a bit more. By 5.10, we begin worrying. My uncle goes to check the car while I wait at the intersection to make sure that we don't miss him if he went down the road away from the trailhead. My uncle returns and says he isn't there either. 
We decide maybe he went up the trailhead without us for some reason and walk up in there for about 10 minutes. He isn't there either. We're kind of baffled now because there are no other logical places he would go. I decide to run back and check the car and the bathroom again. I meet him halfway before I get to the intersection. He is sweaty and disheveled with a weird look in his eyes. I say, where have you been? He says that he went to the bathroom and when he got back to the intersection that we weren't there and that he just assumed that we went to the trailhead and started walking and then met me. I say, what do you mean? We waited at the intersection for over half an hour and checked at the car, bathroom, and trailhead, and you weren't there. He says, well, I don't know. I went to the bathroom. He then asks me where my uncle is. I say, at the trailhead, and he asks me again. I tell him again and note that it was weird that he was asking me twice. As we were crossing the bridge to the trailhead, he sees a light off the riverbank and exclaims, oh, maybe that's him and I just look at him and keep walking. I thought his behavior was very strange, like he wasn't thinking straight. We finally get on with the hike, and it goes by as normal, except that we seem to keep losing things, such as my uncle's small red flashlight, one of the girl's gloves, a water bottle, etc. It's like we simply just forgot about the items and couldn't remember where we possibly could have left them. On the way back, it got dark, and we turned on our flashlights, and as we near the end of the hike after the two waterfalls, it begins to seem as if we've been walking for too long. My uncle also confirms this, asking me, doesn't it seem like it's taken way longer to get back? I say, yeah, that I was just thinking that. We keep walking, but it still seems like we weren't making any progress. I've been on that trail many times, and as I was walking, I couldn't spot any of the familiar landmarks. It was weird. There was this odd feeling in the air, sort of a slight menacing sensation. It's hard to describe. I remember thinking, it feels like the woods are alive. We remark three more times about how long the hike is taking, and start to laugh at it because it felt so ridiculous. After a bit, we finally, and suddenly, find ourselves on the final stretch and make it back to the car. Now, all of this seemed odd at the time, but I just brushed it off. I only just realized how weird those events felt after we got home and my aunt asks my uncle, were you camping? And he says, yeah, how did you know? As we didn't tell them we were going, since it was kind of last minute. She said that she had an odd dream where she saw my uncle in a tent in a forest somewhere and there was someone outside of his tent. She said that she couldn't see who it was but knew that there was a presence there. She says that she woke up around three and had the strongest urge to pray for him. And she did. My uncle kind of looks at me after hearing that like, are you serious? I honestly don't know what to make of all of this. When I was around 12, maybe 13 years old, I'm 24 now, I was staying at my dad's house for the weekend. We watched movies and ate junk food, a usual occurrence when I got to see him. My brother was also usually with us, but this time he was staying with a friend that night. I decided it was time for bed around 11 that evening. I went for my routine, getting ready for bed. He decided that it was time for bed around 11 that evening, and I went about my usual routine, getting ready for sleep. I laid down and tried to pass out. I was restless this night for some reason, just feeling completely uneasy. My bed used to be vertical to the door with my feet closest to the door. I always used to sleep with my door open. I guess it gave me some comfort being able to see half of the entrance to my dad's door, knowing that he wasn't far away. Anyway, as I said, I just couldn't get to sleep, and frustrated, I laid there staring at my ceiling for a moment, and then felt as if someone were watching me. I shifted my eyes to the doorway, and a pitch black figure was standing there, its head almost touching the top of the frame. 
I've never had an issue with sleep paralysis and never have had it since. But then, in that moment, I could not move. All I could do was look at this tall figure that stood there, staring at me. Tears began to flow down my cheeks, and my heart felt as if it were going to beat out of my chest. I managed to barely whisper, Dad? And it turned its head sideways at me as if it were confused. I began hyperventilating intensely, which must have woken my dad because he came running into my room, and as he came through the door, the figure dissolved, as if a breeze came by, and it went away with it. My dad held me as I cried. I slept in his room that night, and for the rest of my stay there until I went back to my mom's. This event shook me to my core, and to this day, I cannot and will not sleep with an open door. I still have a deep feeling of fear, and almost want to cry when I picture that thing, and remember that night. My partner and I had just become parents, and were looking for our first home. We found an older house built around 1910-1920, which seemed perfect. It was next to a good school and close enough to family that could help out with our daughter. Everything seemed great for the next couple of years, but there was always a heavy type of atmosphere that was hard to explain. And we had this feeling like we were being watched all the time. My wife was the first to notice it, and I would always brush it off as if there was nothing to be scared of. I always carried that mindset, as I was highly skeptical of any type of paranormal activity. And I always trusted the whole, if you can't see it, then it doesn't exist, paradigm. How wrong I was, it turned out. The initial signs were that things would go missing and then suddenly turn up in the most peculiar of places like photos, and my watch, which ended up in the bathtub. But most of the time, things seemed to find their way into the wardrobe that was in the master bedroom. Once, my daughter woke us up in the night to tell me that someone had just walked out of her window. As she grew up, she would complain that the man was in her room and she couldn't sleep. I was still not believing that this could be a ghost, so I would comfort her and stay with her until she went back to sleep, and I watched a black-like shadow thing, which I can only describe as darker than the shadows around it, move from the corner of the room and out of the window. I went back downstairs and sat on the sofa, where the deepest growl I ever heard heard happened, which completely took me by surprise as it sounded as if it was right behind my ear. I nearly jumped out of my skin and thought I needed a drink. I went to the kitchen and I could hear laughter in the living room. I couldn't think of any logical reason for it, so I went back upstairs and sat in my daughter's room again for the rest of the night, but nothing more happened. Eventually, things escalated to the point where every night around 2 a.m., you would hear walking up and down the stairs so loud that we nicknamed whatever it was, Mr. Boots. When my daughter was around 10, we would get massive bangs in the middle of the night. When it first happened, I honestly thought we were being burgled. I would run down the stairs only to find nothing, not a thing out of place. I had the plumbing checked and electrical but all was good. Then one night, I fell asleep downstairs and an inflatable hammer flew at the TV, instantly waking me with the noise because it had a squeaker in it. I again was trying to work out how that had happened and whilst I was thinking about it and looking at the hammer on the floor, it started spinning really slowly. I jumped up and walked to the kitchen and again, I heard the laughter. I then heard the boots on the stairs, and my wife suddenly comes down the stairs woken by a really bad nightmare. While we were both talking in the kitchen, we heard the laughter again. Not long after this, we couldn't take it anymore and left. 
but I have hundreds of weird encounters, and I can honestly say that this house turned me into a believer. I always wondered what it was that was in that house. Ghost, demon. We still talk about that place now and then. And probably always will. So, since my medication changed, I haven't been experiencing sleep paralysis that much anymore. But for years, I've had it on a constant basis, nearly every day. I can elaborate on the neurological stuff behind sleep paralysis, but basically, it's very related to stress, anxiety, and a bad sleep schedule. Anyway, I usually don't have auditory or visual hallucinations during sleep paralysis, but almost during every episode, I experience the feeling of leaving my body. I wake up in my bed without being able to move, and I feel my body start to float, accompanied by this awful fear that at any time I might fall down and die. Sometimes I even get to actually see my own body sleeping on my bed from above. But it's always hazy, and I can't actually make out any of my physical features. I simply know that it's me on the bed. At other times, I have the same feeling of leaving my body, but instead of floating, it's something pulling me by the feet and dragging me out of my bed. I don't see anyone. It's just the feeling of being dragged. I would love to know if anyone else has experienced this during sleep paralysis. Is this merely a symptom of it? Or could I really be having an out-of-body experience? I'm Catholic, but not very religious at all. So I'm wondering about other spiritual possibilities. This is 100% real, and frankly, one of the scariest things I've ever had happen while being engaged with the paranormal. My sister and I had gotten a Ouija board about a year prior to this, which is the summer of 2019, on July 4th. We had gotten the board around October of 2018 that previous year, and we had been playing with it in our house. Inside of our house are a variety of spirits. We've managed to make close friendships with a few of them. One of my best friends, again, this is weird to say considering he isn't alive, is a spirit named Sean. And while we are friends with the majority that live in our house and around different places in the neighborhood, there are a few that we have kept our distance from. When we first met the spirits, we learned through the board that we had an evil entity living in our house by the name of Victor. Apparently, Victor was criminally insane when he died, and has since turned evil. The other spirits told us he was residing in the office downstairs, and to never under any circumstances play with the board in there. Another spirit that used to live in our house was named Liam and the spirits told us that he was basically, quote-unquote, Satan incarnate. He had since then left, so the only problem that we had per se was Victor. Victor mostly left us alone, besides a scary instance where he tried to possess me in my sleep. The next day, the spirits told us that this was through the board, and I woke up with holes indented all over my wall. The holes, the spirit said, were bullet holes that Liam shot, because apparently he was back. When they told us Liam was back in the neighborhood as a ghost, I was extremely nervous. I had done research about ghosts like him, and nothing good ever came out of them being back. I tried to forget about it until learning that Victor had essentially left my house, and now he and Liam were both residing in another neighboring house a couple of streets over. 
Well, me being me, obsessed with horror, Halloween, gore, and everything else mysterious and or scary, I decided that I wanted to go and see that house. As mentioned, it was the 4th of July, and my sister, our neighbor, and I ditched the celebrations and rode our bikes to the address where they were supposed to be staying. The spirits had given it to us the day before, again through the board. Now yes, this wasn't a good idea. The last thing that you want to do is provoke an angry spirit. But I didn't really care. I wish I had. And recklessly rode on with my companions in tow. When we arrived at the house, I stopped in front of it, but my sister and neighbor kept riding their bikes. I called for them to stop, and instead, they picked up speed. I was confused at first because I thought it was a joke and was laughing a bit as I kept calling their names. At one point, my neighbor and my sister turned around at the same time to look back at me. When they did, I saw that their eyes were widened and blank and that they had eerie smiles stretched all across their faces. Instantly, I knew that this was bad. I picked up speed, and by this time, I was terrified. Both of their bikes were swerving into the street, barely missing oncoming cars. I was horrified that they would be hit. I remember crying and pedaling as fast as I could, and that was when I knew that they were possessed. Eventually, I ended up following them back to the street my house was on, and tears were streaming out of my eyes. I had never been so scared in my life. Their bikes rode into the yard of a random person, and they both toppled to the ground, flipping over the handlebars. I dropped my bike as well and ran over toward them. They sat up together, blinking. I was hyperventilating, hugging them both as tight as I could. I had honestly thought that they were going to die and that it would have been my fault. They were confused as to why I was crying and what had happened. I found out that neither of them remembered anything except turning into the street. They didn't remember riding the bikes, almost getting hit by multiple cars, or anything else at all. They had totally blacked out. After I had calmed down, we went back into my room and played the board, wanting to figure out what had happened. Apparently, Victor and Liam had possessed my sister and neighbor because I had come by their house and wanted to screw with me. Needless to say, I didn't go back to that street for the rest of the summer. I grew up in rural Oregon with around 70 acres of wooded private property as my personal playground. By the time I was 16, I had spent countless hours exploring every square foot that I could and had never experienced anything any more unpleasant than poison oak and more than a few blackberry scratches. Oddly, there was one small portion of the property that I had never checked out. I couldn't tell you why I had never gone to this one little corner. I just never did. It was like an unconscious choice to just never go there. There was even an old trail or road leading back to it. One afternoon, I got the itch to turn left and follow that trail. The day was bright and warm. Nothing was sketchy or untoward. However, within 50 feet of the trail head, I felt an overwhelming need to stop in my tracks. It was like stepping on a giant, sticky mouse trap. My feet simply wouldn't carry me any further forward. As I stood there, every hair on my body stood on end, and I felt absolutely sick to my stomach with dread. I spun in place, looking every direction for whatever danger my body was telling me was there. The spot where I stood was a bit of a clearing in the trees. I had about 20 feet or so of total visibility in all directions, and further in some. There was nothing. Not so much as a bird or a bug. I've never felt such utter terror and the desire to go full knees to chest for the hills. 
I made my way back to the trailhead as fast as I could backpedal, and the second my feet left the trail, it all faded. Hairs back down, stomach settled, and zero sense of unease. It was like stepping out of a room and closing the door. For years, I wondered what kind of presence I had encountered. Many naysayers tried to tell me that it was probably just a cougar and it was my sixth sense picking up on it. I wasn't buying it. Then, in talking to my parents one day, who used to wander that property when they were dating a few decades ago, I found out that they had come across the remnants of an old homestead there. It had deteriorated to the point where there was nothing left but the outline of the foundation and some old medicine bottles. I had a light bulb moment. Seems that maybe one of the homesteaders was still there, and I was definitely trespassing. I've had short-lived moments of temptation where I thought about going back there and seeing if I could replicate the experience. In all honesty, though, whatever was there was way too dark for me to ever want to encounter it again. It definitely seems best left alone. So a couple of years ago, I want to say like two or three, me and my friend were bored. This was around the time that the Ouija board trend was going around on YouTube, and that kind of stuff has always, and still does, fascinate me. So we both decided to make a Ouija board out of a rectangle of cardboard that we cut off of a box. I believe we also made a ghetto looking planchette out of cardboard too, with a hole cut out of the middle and everything. So anyways. We brought the thing into the basement of my house, already a huge mistake as I learned after, and we started messing around and using it. I don't even remember what we asked it or anything that really happened in detail, but I do remember being in such shock because I felt a strong connection, almost like a magnetic pull, pulling it down and moving it from underneath. Another thing that we both admitted to feeling after we played with it for a couple of minutes was a cold chill, only on our arms, that we were playing with. It wasn't really a breeze, but it just felt, well, bone chilling. The point of this story comes into play now. That night I was in my bedroom, and I got up to go to the washroom, which is straight across the hall from my room, to brush my teeth and get ready for bed. I left my phone on my bed before leaving. So after I was done getting ready and all, I opened the bathroom door and immediately noticed that my room's lights were turned off. This threw up a red flag in my mind right away, and while I was scared, I just thought it was nothing and flipped the lights in my room back on. I went to grab my phone to distract me from the adrenaline and try to calm me down before bed, and I didn't see it on my bed. Or anywhere, for that matter. I got creeped out and immediately flipped the lights off and jumped into bed and hid under the covers. I tried to fall asleep, even though the thought that the Ouija board we had used earlier that day was in the closet about five feet away from me would not leave me alone. I swear I heard a faint knock from inside my closet multiple times that night, but maybe it was just my mind messing with me. The next morning, I wasn't as scared or freaked out as I was the night before, and I got up to take a shower. Once I got out of the shower and stepped out of the bathroom, my phone was right there, on the floor, right in front of me. To this day, it still troubles me, and I have no idea what happened that night. I haven't touched the cardboard Ouija again, but I did purchase a legit Ouija board like three months later and have not really had any outstanding experiences with it, like I had with the cardboard one. I come from the county where Ireland's most haunted house, Loftus Hall, is located. If you want to know the history of Loftus Hall and the original story to it, I'm sure you can find it on Google. 
People that have visited all have their own stories of experiences at the house, and I'm going to share with you some of my experiences that I've had over the years. I lived about a 30 minutes drive away from it, so it was a destination that we visited a lot. I remember the first time I visited the grounds of the house. I was maybe five or six years old and was visiting it with my uncle. As we drove up the long lane leading the way to the house, I remember looking at all of the windows and getting a shiver as we approached. We parked and got out of the car. I stood and stared at the house. We walked around the grounds and around to the side of it where, at the time, there were apple trees. We picked some of them as they were red and juicy and put them in a bag to bring them home with us. When we got home and got the apples out of the bag, every single one had a rotten part on one side. I mean, a big, green, soft, gooey lump on all of them. Another time, when I was around 14, I had went to Loftus Hall with my friend and his mom. There's a nearby lighthouse that's open for people to visit, and we went there first. When we got to the house, there were a few people around, and a young American family there. A mom, dad, and two girls, aged around five and nine-ish. The two girls were running around and playing on the grounds when they ran to their parents laughing and the nine-year-old said, Mommy, Mommy, Anne wants to show us something. Can we go to her room? Now this may seem like normal child behavior, but Anne is the name of the girl in the original haunting story of Loftus Hall. I must also mention that the actual house was not open for guests to go in and out of as they pleased. Not at that time. When I was 16, that was my first time going into the house. We booked a tour on Halloween night. There were some ghost hunters who do an overnight stay every year, and a certain amount of guests can stay there with them for the night. We arrived and went in. We set up our sleeping bags while the ghost hunter crew set up their equipment. We took the tour of the house at night with a tour guide and in groups of five. We went to each room with the guide giving the story behind it. We got to a room called the Tapestry Room. This is the most famous, and apparently most haunted room in the building. It's said that Anne was locked in this room, and she died in the room as she stared out the window waiting for her mysterious stranger to return. You can actually find the details of this story online. She was locked in there, and sat with her knees to her chin, and when she died, her body could not be straightened. Anyway, we entered this room, and it was freezing. One of the guests in our group, now I don't know if they were paid actors or not, but one of the guests in our group collapsed and went into a fit, arms and legs flailing everywhere. An ambulance was called, and he was sent to the hospital, Apparently, it happens often that people collapse and have seizures once they enter that room. The house is situated on a cliff, and the sea is in the background. About four years ago, we went for a drive down there on a foggy evening, and we were looking out to the sea. As we did, we saw the outline of a ship. It looked like something out of the Pirates of the Caribbean, but it floated through the fog and vanished. There have been hundreds of encounters regarding this house that are recorded. Everyone has their own experiences from visiting, everything from feeling queasy in certain parts of the house, to seeing ghosts in the windows, to meeting people while on tours that nobody else who was on the same tour remembers. There's also a hole in the ceiling that goes through the roof and this is where the devil flew through to escape from the house. Over the centuries, this hole has been repaired multiple times, but each time it is repaired, it will only last for a few days and then reopens again in the same place. A good buddy of mine, Andy and I, went for a hike around our local quarry. We took a trail that we hadn't taken before. 
It had really awesome lookouts and a crazy graveyard that we walked by. It was super cool. We also hiked around to this other awesome spot with big rocks to climb. Then we decided to head back to the car. As we were walking back, Andy said that he felt like he had just walked through a giant spider web on the trail, but he couldn't see or feel any strands to pull off. I said, you just went through a portal, jokingly. He said, also half jokingly, that he felt like he might have. Then he said that he started feeling a weird static electricity. This was strange because I was feeling the exact same thing. We were walking and seriously, it felt strangely just intense with jolts of energy going through both of our bodies. Our plan was to take a break at this cool wooden deck down by the quarry water. It was about halfway back to the end of the trail. The plan was originally to chill there for a minute and listen to music on the water. But after that happened, we were freaking out and wanting to see if we could feel that same electricity again. So we went back the way we came and actually took another way back to the trail. We didn't feel anything this time. We had walked just far enough to kind of dismiss what had happened, but then we got back to the same spot where it had happened before. As soon as we started walking up the trail, all of a sudden it was like everything got so quiet, and it felt like we had walked into a cloud of energy that was even stronger than before. There was even an audible buzzing sound in our ears. It seriously made both of us stop in our tracks and say, it's happening again. But this time, it was not a very good feeling. Like, I've never had a feeling of, do not go that way, that intense before. We turned right around and walked the heck out of there, spooked as hell. Last night, I was turning off all of the lights and getting ready for bed. I just had my flashlight from my phone to do some tidying up in the kitchen. I turn it off and go walk into the bedroom. Across from the kitchen, in the living room, there is a shadow. This was something that was different from the usual, as it clearly caught my attention. It was something that looked like a long shape peering in from the upper right side of the window. As if it was a long neck or just some weird shape, definitely abnormal. I was genuinely afraid and kept turning the lights on and off to see when I could see it. It was only when it was completely black inside and the street light and neighbor's porch lights were slightly illuminating the window. I tried to look out but could only see myself in the blinds and it really freaked me out. So I left the lamp by the window on, and after debating, I told myself not to wake my partner up because realistically it's nothing, and what could it be? I mean, we're on the second floor. It seemed really close to the window, and it wasn't moving. I'm not one to believe in paranormal activities. In fact, every time I watch scary YouTube videos that claim to be true and have paranormal shadows or movements, I instantly think it's not true and get annoyed. Walking tonight with my partner, I remembered the situation from last night. I saw nothing on the outside that would show through the window and create the shape that I saw. I quickly went inside with him to see what I could see from the inside with all the lights out again. I was expecting to see it there, and that it was something that I just never noticed before. But it was gone. The window looks completely normal, and the lights outside are the same as they always are. I'll never know what it was. And next time, I will definitely be waking up my partner if I see it. I used to live in an old farmhouse down in a much less populated area, which had always given me a feeling of something close to dread, whether I was alone in the house or not. More often than not, a chill would run down your spine in this house. 
For this story, only my little brother and my parents will be mentioned, my little brother of which had an imaginary friend. It had started on a rather cold and rainy day. I recall because my brothers and I had to play inside, so I decided to hang out with my little brother in his room, which was rather large with a built-in closet big enough for at least two people to sit in if they wanted to. On this day, I had asked to hang out with him. That's when he asked his friend if I could. He said yes, but his friend wanted to play a particular game. He wanted to play hide and seek. I didn't think much of it at the time, so I just agreed. My brother was first. He had to count in the kitchen, so I went around trying to find a hiding spot. That's when I went back into his room to see the closet open wide. For context, it was an old closet that had a locking mechanism on it, though we never had a key. I had jumped in and closed it behind me and was just waiting. And I waited and then waited some more. I felt like I was in there for over an hour at the time. I was just about to give up, and tried to open the closet to get out, but nothing happened. I tried again and again, but it wouldn't budge. That's when I heard it. Loud wheezing coming from beside me. I couldn't see anything, but I could hear and feel what was beside me as it had touched my leg with its skeleton-like fingers. I felt paralyzed as its hands, if you could even call them that, went from my legs up to my stomach and then to my throat. This thing was choking the life out of me and all I could do was sit there with tears flowing down my face. But the worst thing I remember, something that cannot leave my mind, was its voice. The thing had begun giggling in what seemed like a child's giggle, but was distorted in some way that I could not explain. In a stroke of luck, or maybe even fate, just as I was at the point of no return, I heard my brother's voice shouting. He had given up trying to find me. I could hear him as he walked into the room. I began knocking as loudly as I could, and the voice and the grip just disappeared, which was when I began screaming and crying as I burst from the closet without any trouble. My brother took one look at me and began to cry as well for our parents to come in. Of course, as parents do, they ran to see what was wrong and found me on the ground as I was gasping for air, crying my heart out. I then blacked out for an uncertain amount of time, and when I woke up was in the hospital with my family sitting beside me. They looked at me with what I later learned was a mixture of pure joy to see me awake, and pure concern about what had happened. I told them everything. I have never seen anyone go from concern to absolute terror so quickly as they tried to press me further, but I couldn't tell them more than what I knew already. Not long after, the doctors came in to check on us, along with an officer to question my family, and then to question me, as I was almost choked to death. But the doctor had shown that the choke marks were much too thin, almost skeletal, to match anyone. I then told the officer everything. They ended up searching the house in case of a break-in or anything like that, but came up empty. Later that day, my brother came to me to apologize for what had happened. I was confused and asked what he meant. What he told me next chilled me to the bone. After I had agreed to play hide-and-seek, his friend said that he would help find me and would look in his room, which was why he didn't actually look there in the first place, but did come looking after he couldn't find me, which was when he found me in my condition. To this day, I'm not sure that that thing wouldn't have killed me if my brother had not come into his room when he did. And to be honest, I'll be happy to never find out. I am aware of sleep paralysis. I understand your brain can project things, etc. I'm not denying that. That is what possibly could have happened, but damn did it scare me, so I'm going to tell you. 
Now, I have had sleep paralysis a fair few times in my life but this is the scariest thing that I have ever, ever experienced during a sleep paralysis episode. One night, I woke up during a quite peaceful sleep. Across from my bed is the TV and, of course, a wall behind that TV. I opened my eyes and instantly noticed that I was in sleep paralysis. I worked on moving my fingers, but I heard something. It sounded like something floating, like woo woo sound. Being on my stomach, I could see across my room, which was my TV. The wall behind that TV, I shit you not, was all of a sudden a window. I didn't see it change into a window. It was already a window when I looked at it. I start breathing heavily. The sound is getting closer and the brightest light that I have ever seen shines into my room, but not enough for me to lose vision. A UFO just floats by my window. Meanwhile, I'm still telling myself to move and not freak out. It continues to pass until I see it slowly backing up outside the window. I'm still trying to move. The UFO sits there. I try calling for my housemate, which of course doesn't work. I feel something malvoyant at the end of my bed. I see a tall, dark shadow. And as it reached out to grab or touch or whatever it planned to do, I shot up from my bed. Absolutely the most scared that I had ever been. I was breathing heavily and when I did shoot up, the window became my wall again. There was no sound. Most of my sleep paralysis episodes, I don't usually remember falling asleep. But this night, this night I didn't go back to sleep. My grandpa was always a big hunter. It's not uncommon here in the Midwest. He would always find new areas to hunt and get permission to hunt on private properties. So one day, him and his buddy got permission to go on this private land that I believe was around 100 acres total. I don't recall the specifics of exactly where the forest was. For now, I know for a fact that this was in the Michigan-Indiana border area, or in other words, Michiana. Anyways, they set out around noon to get to the forest and arrived at around 1 p.m. and started hiking back into the woods. They each had their own tree stands or blinds set up prior, so they made their way to them. I remember my grandpa telling me that they hiked a few miles back, so they had to have been deep in the woods. As the day goes on, they don't see any deer, so once the sun began to set, they decided to start making their way back to the truck and met up near my grandpa's tree stand. This is where the weird stuff happens. They're making their way back and the sun has completely set. Luckily, they brought flashlights for the walk back because otherwise they would have had to have walked a few miles in pitch black. Anyways, they finally have about a mile of hiking left when they see something or someone crouched in front of them with their back turned to them. My grandpa described him as a bald white guy wearing a black and white striped shirt. My grandpa's friend speaks up after a moment that I can only imagine as a what the heck is this feeling and asks what he's doing out there and without a word, the man stands up and faces them, stares, then levitates up toward the trees and disappears. After that, they sprinted to the truck and never went back to that land again. I know it's not the craziest of stories and sounds so weird but I know for a fact that my grandpa did experience this. My grandpa's not a liar, and it was never some scary campfire story that he told us grandkids. When he told me, I could see in his face that it was disturbing him and is something that he can never forget. During the summer of last year, I was visiting my family at my grandma's house. 
I met up with my cousins and we decided to take the day to go out, eat, and catch up. After countless conversations regarding how my grandmother was still extremely religious, Muslim, we reflected on how we turned out not to be so religious and laughed. Until we had the brilliant idea of playing with the Ouija board in my grandma's living room, where, mind you, she had a chandelier that played two small verses from the Quran every time it was turned on. When we went back to the house, it was already nighttime, but we decided to wait a little longer before we began. Meanwhile, out of curiosity, we asked our grandma about the Quran lights. She said that her uncle had installed them about six years ago and that they had stopped working, reciting the verses not actually lighting up the place. About a month after he bought them and she laughed it off. Later, when we found that the living room was vacant, it was our perfect chance. We turned off all the lights and settled around the table where we placed the Ouija board and everything. We began the process, following the instructions carefully. After about 15 minutes of nothing, we decided that the Ouija board didn't work and that we didn't have the true paranormal experience that we wanted. It was our first time playing, or trying to. We closed it up and I got up to go turn the lights back on, and the second I did so, the chandelier started reciting holy verses of the Quran. I froze in place and stared at my cousins, who looked just as shocked as me. I turned the lights off immediately and got out of the room while one of my cousins rushed to take the Ouija board out of the room as well. One of my cousins said that this is a warning from God, that a spirit had entered and that the Quran was pushing it away. I didn't believe him, but we turned the lights on again and that time, the verses didn't play. I thought it might have been a coincidence, a creepy one, but a coincidence nevertheless. My cousin grabbed the Ouija board and stepped back in with it, and she turned on the lights, and again the chandelier recited the verses. This time she looked at me and said that there was no way that it could be a coincidence. We all agreed that we wouldn't mess around with it again, and we threw out the Ouija board the next morning. The chandelier never recited the Quran again, and we never told our grandma about it. This is a series of events that occurred when I lived on a plot of farmland a couple of years ago. I was pregnant with my daughter, and my boyfriend worked late at night, so I was home alone a lot. Things were okay for a while, but as time went on, it started feeling strange in the house. I always felt like I was being watched while in my bathroom and the hallway right by it. I started feeling uncomfortable around windows at night. I figured I was just scared of being there alone. One of the first strange events happened while my boyfriend and I were in bed. While watching TV, I saw the door handle to our room slowly turn as if someone were about to open the door, but then it turned back. It caught me off guard, and I was trying to get my boyfriend's attention, but it stopped when he finally looked. Things began falling off the surfaces outside where my boyfriend would go to smoke cigarettes. He told me he would feel breathing on his face while in bed. He told me several months after it started happening, thinking that it would freak me out if he told me. He's not the type to jump to a, it's a ghost conclusion. After I had my daughter, I was even more scared to be in the house by myself. I even began locking myself in our room every single night. One night, I was waiting for him to come home from work. It was around 3 a.m. I heard the door handle jiggle as if someone were about to come in, but then stopped. I figured my boyfriend had to use the bathroom or something. After waiting, for about 10 minutes, I called him asking why he didn't come in yet, and he told me that he wasn't even home. My friend came over to hang out with me and my daughter. I was changing her while my friend was in the other room. I heard someone say, hello? And I thought it was my friend, but she said she heard it too, and that it wasn't her. I would get my friend to come pick me and my daughter up frequently when my boyfriend was at work because I was so afraid. 
One night, I had an overwhelming feeling of danger and had them come get us. I was taking my daughter's car seat out to their car and it literally felt like someone yanked it down and out of my hands. I didn't drop it. I don't know how to explain it other than to say just that it was yanked or jerked down. I hated being in this house. I can't even explain the feelings that I felt all the time. I was just so terrified, and I'm so happy to be out of there. We moved away three years ago. On moving day, my boyfriend told me there were garbage bags at the top of the stairs that were placed in a way that they weren't going to go anywhere. But as he and his brother were loading up the last bit of stuff out the front door, he saw these bags come tumbling from down the stairs. My bland storytelling does my emotions no justice. I've never been so scared just to be in my own house every night. As soon as the sun would set, the whole vibe would shift. I thought I was crazy. I was getting angry and upset far too often over nothing. I honestly dread the idea of ever going through something like that again. This happened to me a few months ago, and just once. I was sleeping on my couch when I was suddenly in a paralysis state. I couldn't move no matter what I did. As I was trying to move, I heard a female voice laughing in my ear. I couldn't see them, but I clearly heard that they were laughing. I tried to scream, but couldn't let out a sound. Then I woke up, a little sweaty and terrified. My heart was pumping so much that it hurt my ears. I looked everywhere, but saw no one. I didn't go back to sleep after this, because this wasn't my first experience, and I realized if I go to sleep again, the same thing would happen. This was the first time I ever experienced something terrified, so I didn't risk it and stayed up all night. Ever since, I've never had an experience like this one again. I should also mention that I live in a house that gives off a terrible vibe and has a history of violence. The poor house suffered from an abusive family. It's possible that this house brings out the worst in people because my mom unfortunately lost herself. She was now abusive and worse. She was a kind woman who didn't want any problems, but unfortunately we had an abusive parent figure. But save that story for another time. Roughly 12 years ago, when I was in high school, me and a group of friends, not real ones, trespassed at an abandoned building in my town. I was hesitant to even step foot on the property, but I was coerced into following them. It was horrible to say the least, but because I wanted to fit in, I kept close. I didn't know much about the place outside that it was possessed by extremely negative auras for various reasons. Come to find out, it was a sanitarium for over 30 years, then once shut down, became a very poorly practiced hospital. This led me to ask questions because I'm naturally curious. They took me to the basement, where supposedly the sanitarium would do electroshock therapy and dispose of waste. I was pushed over the edge. All of them called me names and belittled me, so I just turned and slowly went to leave, when some noise started all of us in the far back of the basement. They all just rushed the stairs, shoving me to the side. I fell and tried to get up, but there was this heaviness around me. I looked back only to see nothing. No light, no stairs, no basement. 
All I heard was my name, almost as a whisper. Stupidly, I responded, then saw what I honestly believed to be two yellow eyes. They looked despondent and almost longing. I picked myself up and ran out, still wearing my friends, still hearing my friends rushing to escape. Once I left, though, they all came flooding towards me, asking where the hell I had been, saying that I had been gone for like ten minutes at least. It was only a few seconds for me, though. Now that you have that part of the story, here's what's happening currently. I have been diagnosed with COVID and... I'm not doing overly well with it. Constant cough, chest pain, pre-existing ulcer acting up causing internal bleeding and almost always on the verge of sweating. Nothing good has been coming from this. But it gets worse, as I'm having a nightmare that I haven't had since 2011 when the manor was condemned and then demolished. I would see the eyes, in corners, in side views and they were almost always gone by the time that I would notice. Except now, in 2020, it's in my head. I'll be dreaming normally, and then I'll hear my name as a whisper and jump awake. Each night for the past week, I've been hearing my name randomly in my apartment and in my dreams, but have started seeing those eyes again. I've talked to a few people about this, and some say that my spirit had been seen by something on the other side. Basically, I'm familiar with them, and they can find me now. Others said that when I fell, that the heavy feeling was a piece of my soul being pulled away. That's why when it was demolished, I saw the eyes and heard the voice again. Either way, with COVID happening, and this happening at the same time, I just don't know. This happened a few years back, on my spring break, senior year of high school. I was hiking part of the Long Trail, which goes south from Glastonbury to Bennington, and it was the usual very cold nights, warm, muddy days Vermont usually has in spring, so pretty fun to hike in. I was going to take a day and rest my feet, go swimming in a pond and cool off, so I took a detour onto the Bald Mountain Trail. I got to my campsite around 5, and the sun was setting, so I set up my hammock and rain tarp and made a fire. I made some mountain house beef stroganoff and decided to just lay down and watch the flames. I hadn't seen anyone since before noon, which is unusual because it's a pretty well-traveled section of the trail. I started to get really uneasy, and it definitely felt like someone was watching me from a distance. I ended up sitting with my back against a maple, facing the fire and holding my camp knife. A few hours later, nine-ish... I heard a really loud crash in the woods, like a plane falling out of the sky or a freight train right next to me. Then dead silence. No wind, no leaves, no owls. Just absolute quiet. I remember getting really uncomfortable and shouting out to see if there was anyone out there, but I just started hearing a really subtle droning noise, like a key being rubbed on a brass string or radio static but super low pitched. I didn't sleep at all that night. I just watched the moon go really slowly over the sky and the sound get quieter as it got lighter outside. When I could see well enough to walk, I picked up my gear and sprinted back to the main trail and found some people up early and hiked with them all the way back. This happened many years ago, so I don't remember many details, but the experience still feels vivid. It is important to be mentioned that the bedroom where I was has a view to the backyard and the kitchen. So, my story took place at my previous home when I was ten. I was alone with my sister, who was four at the time. 
but later my parents came home after mass. The TV was on and showing a comedy program, but I wasn't very interested. After some time, I noticed what I thought was a person in the corner of my eye. But at a second glance, I realized it wasn't exactly a person. It was a child with curly hair. The silhouette resembled that. And my reaction was nothing but freak out. I was losing my mind, thinking about going to find out what it was or call someone. My sister was sleeping, so she didn't know about it until I told my parents. After some minutes, I managed to calm myself down and wait in that room until my parents came home. Nobody believed me at that moment. And during those years, we didn't have any cameras or smartphones. Some years later, I found out about shadow people, and my experience fits with the stories told. I don't know what to think about that, but always remember that day, even after I moved out. Twenty-five years ago, we moved homes. It wasn't in the greatest of areas, but it was better than we were previously. I shared a room with one of my four sisters. We had a TV in our room, but the remote control was broken, so we never used it. It stayed on Channel 5, the TV Guy channel. After a few months of living there, the TV in our room would randomly turn on every night and switch to channel 33, which was usually 7th Heaven or Full House that would be playing. No one in my family ever watched that channel. We didn't think anything paranormal about it. The house didn't feel creepy. Everything was fine aside from the TV turning on. Eventually, the channel would change to a station with just static, and the volume would turn on all the way. It would scare us and wake us up every night, so we unplugged the TV. Ever since the station had changed to static, the vibe of the house felt different. It was heavy, and my sisters and I always felt afraid, but we didn't know why. After a year living there, we would experience weird things. Lights turning off and on, random noises, hearing kids. Our aunt lived downstairs, and she was always keeping her room locked, even when she was home. One day, my sister and I went downstairs to grab the vacuum, and we heard jumping on my aunt's bed, and her door was wide open. My aunt was at work, so we poked our heads in to see who was there. We saw no one but heard kids laughing and the bed moving, once again, as if someone were jumping up and down on it. A few days later, we were playing in the living room upstairs and we heard a cough coming from down the hall. We went to check on who it was, because no one was home aside from my sisters and I, and we were all together. We saw a man in black pointing to my sister's room, as if he wanted us to go. We were terrified, so of course we didn't. We stayed put until my parents came home. When they arrived, we told them what happened. They went to check out my sister's room, and there were scratches and crayon marks all over the wall and ceiling. We ended up moving out of the house when my aunt was sleeping with her door locked, and in the middle of her sleep, she heard the voices of three different men. When she tried to open her eyes, they were held shut. They choked her and laughed. She tried to scream for help, but she couldn't make a sound. She eventually passed out, and when she woke up, she felt as though she had been beaten. Her door was still locked, and everything was still in place. We thought it was sleep paralysis, as there were no signs of anything that happened. But later on that day, and within the next few days, there were bruises all over her body and around her neck. We couldn't explain what had occurred. In 
In high school, my friends and I were messing around with a Ouija board one night. We had done it before, and nothing remarkable had ever happened. We usually did it to try and scare each other or our girlfriends. We all thought it was a joke. That night, there was no one else home except the seven of us, and we were all together around the board. One of the girls there wanted to try it. She had never done it before. This time was different. The board misspelled some of the words the same way every time. It gave answers that seemed historically accurate for our town, things we never knew or never cared about. Long story short, the spirit claimed it was a ten-year-old boy who had died on the property in the 1800s and was buried there, too, in an unmarked grave. My friend's house was on a farm in the edge of town. We were all a little freaked out, because the board had never been so detailed and consistent. However, we were still skeptical, and we were all assuming one of us was trying to scare the rest. Finally, my friend asked if the spirit could do something to prove he was there with us. It went to yes, and then spelled out, knock. Then the planchette stopped moving. We all just stared at it silently, and then there was a rap, rap, rap on the window right next to us. The lights were on outside, and there was absolutely no one there. We never touched that effing board again. About four years ago, I took my dog for a short hike. It was about a mile walk from the car to the beach along the Strait of Juan de Fuca in Washington State. The trail led us through the tall cedar trees and then to a large clearing which led to the beach. My dog and I played on the beach for a while before I decided to head back. We stopped and took a break at a picnic table in the middle of the clearing. My dog, being the monkey she is, was standing on top of the picnic table looking around when she fixated on a spot across the field and her hair rose on the back of her neck. Always one to trust my pup, I became extra observant. As we stood there, a black mist appeared out of thin air to our right. I watched as it took on a long form roughly the size of a human. It glided across the trail and dissolved. It was really like looking at a small, black, translucent cloud. It scared the crap out of me and my dog, and I boogied back to the car. I've never found an answer to what the black mist was. Last night, I was laying in bed trying to sleep. My room is already a nice, cool temperature due to my air conditioner. However, it feels as though out of nowhere, the temperature drops 10 more degrees. I find this a bit strange, but I don't really mind it. Then suddenly, I feel what I think is a touch, like something is touching me around my neck and chest as well as pressure building on those areas. I simply try not to ignore it and go to sleep. The cold and sensations of touch are a mere annoyance at this point, but that's when I saw it. I looked over my bed to the door, and there it was. A large, lanky shadow figure standing there with yellow eyes. It was only there for a second, but it still managed to scare me. Luckily, I was able to sleep, and as a precaution, I now have a bowl of salt in my room. As I hear, it repels evil spirits, and possibly demons. About a year ago, I bought a house and started living alone. A few months of me living there and everything seemed normal and fine, except for one morning. On that morning, I woke up and felt like I was pinned down and that my bed was moving towards the door 
and back toward my wall. All I remember is trying my hardest to move, but I felt paralyzed. I don't have a history of sleep paralysis, and I also have a hard time believing in ghosts, but this was a pretty crazy experience. Nothing has happened since that morning, but I still don't know what was happening. <laughs>